in today's show. I'll be breaking down the latest Bitcoin technical analysis as we already tapped 53,000 this morning and dump right back down to 52. Also breaking news, South Korea's opposition party is now pledging to let domestic investors buy Bitcoin ETFs. That's right. Both parties now support lifting of the ban. And quoting the high priest of Bitcoin, Max Kaiser, stocks are setting up for another 1987 style crash. Bitcoin will emerge triumphant as the ultimate safe haven. Money is already fleeing gold ETFs and pouring into Bitcoin ETFs. He also says, I like Kathy Wood's ARK Invest. They are true Bitcoiners. Let's go. Also in today's show, Bitcoin holdings on Coinbase reached the lowest level since 2015, as Wells withdraw $1 billion in BTC. Also, institutions pour all-time record of $2.4 billion of capital into crypto ETPs in one week. I'll be sharing this latest data from CoinShares, as well as BlackRock labels Bitcoin as progress in their latest spot Bitcoin ETF ad, as well as rich dad Robert Kiyosaki expects Bitcoin to smash $100 hundred thousand dollars per coin by june of this year send it also in today's show we have whitney webb exposing blackrock's grand scheme to tokenize the world that's right in the aftermath of the recent bitcoin etf approvals blackrock's larry fink revealed that soon everything will be etf'd and tokenized threatening to fractionalize not just existing assets and commodities but the natural world reducing most living things into wall street financial products to be traded on a single universal ledger we'll also be taking a look at the overall crypto market all this plus so much more in today's show But anyways, fam, if you're new to the channel, be sure to smash the subscribe button to receive daily premium crypto news alerts every day, just like this. Also important to smash the like to help pump the stream as it helps out tremendously with a YouTube algorithm. Today is pod episode number 1557. I'm your host, JV, rocking the number 11, as we do. And uh, yeah, today is February 20th, 2020. Four. There's only like 56 more days until the having the biggest event that occurs every four years in the crypto sphere. Let's kick it off with our market watch. This morning, we were like, you know, down. And then before I went live, we tapped 53. Then we corrected. We're currently sitting just above 51,800. We have Ether, which almost touched 3,000, maybe on some of the exchanges it has already. It's continuing uh, to pump. While Solana, Cardano, BNB, and XRP are all pulling back and uh, in the red. And let's zoom out on the monthly to get a more broader perspective. You can see Bitcoin still crushing it, up 23% on the month. Ether up 18%, Solana 15, ADA 18, BNB 10, and XRP not doing anything. But anyways, uh, ch checking out coinmarketcap.com. Earlier, it was 1.9 nine trillion on the cusp of two trillion so we may have touched it when we tap 53 but then it pulled back just here shortly and uh we're sitting at roughly 84 billion in volume for the past 24 hours means it's up 35 percent bitcoin dominance is at 51.8 percent while the ether dominance continues its momentum currently at 17.9 percent and checking out the top 100 crypto gainers for the past 24 hours file coin leading the pack up nine and a half percent followed by gno followed by see a coin very modest gains in the alt market as the majority are currently correcting and in the red and i'm curious which altcoins in particular are you most bullish on for this bull run let me know family in the comments and checking out the crypto bubbles to get a visual perspective yesterday virtually everything was in the green well today now we're pulling back correction as you can see the overall altcoin market correcting in the red with a handful still in the green and zooming out on the monthly still overall Pretty fantastic month, not just for Bitcoin, but for the entire crypto sphere. And checking out uh, the Crypto Greed and Fear Index shows we're currently rated a 72 greed. Yesterday, 75. Last week, a 79 extreme greed, the highest we have seen this in a couple of years. And last month, a 56 in greed. And checking out the Bitcoin halving countdown clock. We only have 56 more days, family, until the estimated halving taking place scheduled to be April 17th. Again, less than two months out. Where do you feel the Bitcoin price action is likely to be by the time of this halving? Let me know in the comments family but anyways let's dive into our bitcoin technical analysis check out the charts where the bitcoin price action is likely to 
take us next. As you can see here, Bitcoin dipped into intraday lows February 20th as a public holiday in the U.S. limited the buy demand. Yesterday was President's Day, Abe Lincoln's birthday, so the traditional markets were closed. Here, you're looking at the Bitcoin one-hour chart. Data from TradingView tracked the Bitcoin price floor of 51.3 on Bitstamp. An otherwise flat start to the week ended in cold feet for Bitcoin after the February 19th daily close. But a recovery subsequently took the market back to 52. And in fact, uh, just a few hours ago, we hit 53 before dumping right back to where we started at around 51.5. Wall Street was closed the day prior, thanks to President Day, uh, meaning there were no new inflows into the spot Bitcoin ETFs, which were recorded. And as this continues, these inflows have uh, consistently buoyed the market sentiment in the recent weeks, creating a positive feedback loop as others attempt to front run the institutions by buying Bitcoin. In advance, in a recent commentary, material indicators suggested the long weekend would allow the price action to simmer down a bit after the recent rapid gains. And ahead of the intraday dip, another post laid out the potential lower targets should the bears gain the upper hand. Quoting him here, if Bitcoin doesn't bounce from here, consider the door to 51,000 opened. And if that doesn't hold, look to 50,000, then 48.6 for the next levels of support. If those don't hold, things can get very exciting in the short term. Long-term outlook, unchanged. Now, meanwhile, Ethereum hits levels absent for nearly two years. That's right. We saw a bit, uh, Ethereum touch roughly uh, $3,000 on some of the exchanges here this morning. Right here, you're looking at the one-week Ethereum chart. So also the Ethereum dominance has been back on the rise, quoting Mikhail Ben Pop. This is still a massive period to be rotating from Bitcoin towards Ethereum. The upward momentum is continuing in Ethereum, not in Bitcoin, and quoting SKU. Ethereum on the one-day clean higher high close after reclaiming the high time frame resistance. Uh, 2728 weekly open always a good opportunity area uh else structural high uh dips are for buying in my opinion higher lows alts still have a ton of opportunity from here assuming bitcoin remains strong after the one week close let me know if you agree or disagree with that sentiment and quoting sku he also said the alts still have a ton of opportunity from here assuming bitcoin remains strong after the one week close other breaking news just in south korea's opposition party is now pledging to let domestic investors by the Bitcoin ETFs, meaning both parties are now supporting lifting of the ban. Let's go. And quoting the high priest, uh, Max Kaiser, in regards to this post regarding Stan Drunken Miller on the 1987 collapse, Max says stocks are setting up for another 1987 style crash. Bitcoin will emerge triumphant as the ultimate safe haven. Money is already fleeing gold ETFs and pouring into the Bitcoin ETFs. I like Kathy Woods. Bath water. Just playing. <laughs> Kathy Woods, ARK Invest, ARK B ETF, which he, he is an investor in. He says they are true Bitcoiners. And also BlackRock and Fidelity now hold over 200,000 Bitcoin through Coinbase, who is their custodian. I got to point that out, which is more than MicroStrategy, which currently has roughly 190,000 Bitcoin. And they bought it all in the first 26 days of trading. So Larry Fink ultimately accomplished what took Michael Saylor four, four years in one month. And they're just getting started, family. So you already know, as the ETF inflows shall continue today, let's go. Now let's discuss the supply shock as Bitcoin supply is drying up over on Coinbase. Bitcoin holdings on Coinbase have fallen to their lowest level in nine years as users move a significant chunk of their holdings off the exchange. According to CryptoQuant, the whales moved 18,000 Bitcoin worth nearly a billion dollars off of Coinbase just over this weekend, with transfers uh, in value ranging from 45 mil to 171 million. Coinbase's public order book now holds around 394,000 BTC, which is estimated to be worth just above $20 billion. Whales moving their Bitcoin holdings away from centralized exchanges is considered a bullish sign as less Bitcoin is available for sale. However, users on social media are divided over the nature of the transfers. Some believe the funds are being moved to custodial wallets in anticipation of a price surge with the upcoming Bitcoin having just less than two months away, creating a supply shock, while a few others believe that the move funds could be used for liquidity for over-the-counter trades, quoting Julio Moreno. Largest hourly Bitcoin outflow in 2024 from Coinbase today, 18,746 Bitcoin moved in two transactions at the same block 
block. However, the transactions have all the patterns that would suggest the Bitcoin is going into custody, input consolidation, new addresses being created. Others suggest the funds could be going to a different custodian and that they aren't individual withdrawals as most of what are in these exchanges doesn't belong to them anyways. So this number should be a lot lower. And with every Bitcoin having cycle, the amount of the new Bitcoin entering the market is reduced in half, creating a supply crunch as demand continues to grow. The next Bitcoin halving is scheduled to take place April 17th at block height, 740,000, a divine number as seven and four equals 11. The block rewards for each block mined by miners will be reduced to six and a quarter B BTC uh, from six and a quarter to 3.125 BTC. The upcoming halving also comes amid the massive institutional demand. As we know, on January 11th, again, another divine number, we had 11, another divine number. ETFs officially approved. And currently around 900 Bitcoin is mined daily, while Bitcoin ETFs daily net inflows are about a half a billion dollars or about 9,650 BTC, despite Grayscale registering nearly 100 million in daily outflows. Post-April halving, the daily amount of Bitcoin produced will be reduced to about 450 BTC, with the institutional demand continuing to rise. This massive supply demand gap has historically proven bullish for the Bitcoin price, with new all-time highs coming within a year of the having. So there you have it, a family. Do you feel a supply shock is imminent? And by when do you think this will likely occur? As you know, Bitcoin price kind of goes off of supply and demand. When you have more buyers than sellers, that's definitely a good sign that we're going to pump and vice versa. When you have more sellers than buyers, that's a classic sign of a dump. So what happens when we have these ETF inflows accumulating 12.5x the daily issuance of Bitcoin, right? And you have a very limited amount of Bitcoin available in the exchanges, like we just witnessed the lowest supply from Coinbase in the past nine years. What does that tell us? Eventually, all this Bitcoin is going to be dried up. And in order for these asset managers to continue to acquire more and more Bitcoin, which they need for their ETPs, exchange traded products, the price has to go up. Because right now, 80% uh, 80 of the Bitcoin supply is in the hands of the long-term hodlers, which is a beautiful thing. And a lot of these long-term hodlers refuse to sell regardless of the price action. So now you gotta bribe them to sell their biddies by increasing the price. So incoming supply shock, let me know your thoughts. Uh, but anyways, fam, let's dive into our next story of the day and discuss $2.45 billion of capital into the crypto ETPs as the massive demand continues. Digital asset manager CoinShares says the institutions poured $2.45 billion into crypto investment products last week, which is the largest weekly inflow ever recorded. In its latest digital asset fund flows report, they say that the crypto investment products assets under management are now at their highest level since December of 2021. Can you say deja vu? Quitting them here. Digital asset investment products saw record weekly inflows totaling in US 2.45 billion with the inflows for the year to date now at an impressive 5.2 billion. These inflows coupled with recent positive price moves have elevated the total assets under management in the US to 67 billion marking the highest level since December of 2021. And as you know, it was November 10th of 2021. We hit our impressive all-time high, which currently sits at 69,000. So according to CoinShares, the vast majority of the inflows, 99%, came from the U.S., likely due to the increased interest in the crypto spot ETFs. Quoting the report again, simultaneously, the outflows from incumbent players have decreased dramatically. Other regions, such as Germany and Switzerland, experienced modest inflows, 13 mil and 1 mil, respectively, while Sweden saw outflows totaling 26 mil. So per usual, Bitcoin saw the lion's share of inflows taken in 99% of last week's inflows at 2.43 billion. Then we had Ethereum, Avalanche, and Chainlink, as well as Polygon. ESA saw inflows of 21 million, 1 million, 0.9 million, 0.9 million, respectively. Short Bitcoin positions saw nearly 6 million of inflows, while Solana suffered 1.6 million in outflows. So there you have it, my crypto fam. Anyways, family, uh, yeah, let's discuss BlackRock in a little more detail now. BlackRock labels Bitcoin as progress in their latest spot Bitcoin ETF ad. So they dropped another ad. How many of you watched it? Let me know. BlackRock ramped up its media advertising campaign for its recently launched spot Bitcoin ETF, labeling the asset not as a currency, 
but it's progress. In its latest advertisement, the world's largest asset manager maintained its relatively boring approach to advertising its iShares Bitcoin Trust ETF, at least compared to its competitors. Well, they're targeting the boomers, so it only makes sense. They're speaking a different language, family. Bitcoin ETFs have landed, states the yellow advertisement, showing simply a silhouette of a runaway <laughs> in a plane. BlackRock adds the caption, get your share of progress. The seemingly mundane marketing approach wasn't overlooked by industry observers, such as Bloomberg Intelligence ETF analyst Balchunas, who described it as being in the sweet spot between a boring legacy fund and a, hey, fellow kids type of stuff. And here you can see here, Bitcoin ETFs landed. iBit, the iShares Bitcoin Trust, now lets you access Bitcoin, where you get your stocks and bonds so you can manage all of your investments in one place, get your share of progress. So he added that the firm was on the brink of pulling away as the category liquidity king. So going for the kill with more advertising makes sense. Adding the following, interesting, they equate Bitcoin not with a commodity or a currency, but with progress. And quoting Eric Balchunas, new iBit ad just dropped, in my opinion, simple, modern, effective, and a sweet spot uh, for the boring legacy fund, co-ad, and strong advisor-friendly vibes, BlackRock on the brink of pulling away as the category liquidity king, going for the kill with more ads, only makes sense. Now, the firm also mentions how the ETF standardizes uh, the Bitcoin, making it like stocks and bonds in a portfolio. BlackRock's first ETF advertisement released January 11th also took the mature approach targeting the affluent boomer market. Since the product launch, BlackRock has seen inflows of $5.3 billion to the iBit ETF, according to Farside. Moreover, the Bitcoin ETF market in war has been heating up since Bitwise dropped the first ad mid-December 2023 using actor Jonathan Goldsmith, the most interesting man in the world. The promotional blitz accelerated after Google began allowing crypto ads earlier in February. And on the 15th of February, iShares started promoting the fact that Bitcoin had become a trillion dollar asset in terms of market cap. And coincidentally, Whistleblower Ed Snowden also referred to Bitcoin as the future of money in a recent tweet on February 19th, quoting him here, unpopular but true. Bitcoin is the most significant monetary advance since the creation of coinage. Breach. So there you have it. Crypto fam. Let me know your thoughts on BlackRock's new advertising uh, piece. And uh, I do think they'll continue advertising to the wheels fall off to have all the money in the world. And there's mass competition, which we call game theory in full effect with ETFs here in the United States as there's seven, I mean, 11 now officially live as of January 11th. And now we have competition likely coming soon out of Hong Kong, which we have discussed. The first ETF applicant has already been submitted. And we also have uh, hype surrounding El Salvador with ETFs coming out, which are gonna be different than all the other ETFs currently available, which means Bitcoin in, Bitcoin out, which doesn't exist currently. All right, let's now discuss Kiyosaki, Rich Dad, projecting 100,000 Bitcoin price target by June, which is right around the corner, which would be pretty lit. That would obviously be post having, And then we'll be discussing the latest from Whitney Webb and BlackRock's end game as we blow the whistle on their true agenda. And then we'll do some live Q&A. If you're just joining the stream, pump the likes to pump the stream. I greatly appreciate that family. So yeah, Rich Dad uh, recently shared on X, Bitcoin to 100,000 by June 2024, got over 3.2 million views, and that was just shared two days ago. So he ultimately expects Bitcoin and silver to take off while gold will crash below $1,200 an ounce, which is interesting considering how bullish he has been on gold over the past few decades. So where's the gold price right now? I'm going to speculate 2,000, but correct me if I'm wrong, family. Let me know in the chat. So he's ultimately anticipating a $800 gold crash. Let me know if you agree. The acclaimed author has also been issuing warnings about the U.S. economy, likening its potential collapse to that of the Roman Empire without expecting a soft landing. He has additionally forecasted imminent crashes in both the stock and bond markets. Moreover, he expressed concerns that the next crash could spiral into a depression. In a recent warning, he also urged investors to buy Bitcoin in response to the U.S. government's growing debt. What is it, like 34 trillion, fam? He later emphasized that crypto's potential to protect against the theft of our wealth via our money. Following the approval of the spot Bitcoin ETFs, he also revealed that he had increased his Bitcoin holdings. He believes Bitcoin will soon hit $150,000 per coin, advising investors to pay attention to the upcoming Bitcoin halving. Now, Rich Dad isn't the only one bullish on Bitcoin post-halving. We also have David Streitzewski, an investment advisor and CEO of 
Sound Planning Group, who said last week that Bitcoin is priced for a serious rally. And also, we had a panel of experts at Finder uh, ultimately predict exceeding 77,000 this year, which personally I think is extremely bearish and conservative, but still puts us in price discovery. We also have Tim Draper, the billionaire venture capitalist who doubled down on his quarter million Bitcoin price prediction for this year in 2024. And we also have Fundstrat's head of research uh, who says Bitcoin is heading to 150,000, could even potentially hit 500,000 which is a half a million within the next five years. And we also have Kathy Wood's investment management firm, ARK Invest, seeing a higher probability of the Bitcoin price soaring to 1.5 million per coin. In fact, about a week or two ago, I even shared an updated analysis from ARK with Kathy Wood, suggesting we could hit 2.3 million per coin. We also have Standard Chartered, the primary shareholder of that company, Major Bank, is actually BlackRock. They also say Bitcoin could hit 200,000 per coin in 2025. And asset manager Bitwise expects Bitcoin to surpass 80,000 this year while competing firm Vanek said Bitcoin will make an all-time high quarter four of this year, potentially spurred by political events and regulatory shifts following the U.S. presidential election, which is scheduled to happen later this year, I think around November. So let me know if you guys are currently bullish regarding that and what's your thoughts regarding Rich Dad's 100,000 price target by June of this year. Considering it's already February, we're only a week or two away from March. That's April, May, June, roughly roughly three months out. Let me know your thoughts, family, in the comments below. And I'm going to read you one more tweet he shared. Andy Sheckman asked a very important question. Who is going to buy U.S. bonds? The banks are buying gold, not U.S. debt. How will America run without the money? How will the world operate with money? What will you do without money? Gold is going to crash possibly below 1,200 an ounce. Silver will take off, as will Bitcoin. Take care, and be careful. So there you have it, my crypto fam. Let me know your thoughts on that sentiment. Lock Sky just gifted five memberships of the channel. This is the legendary Lock Sky, who a few episodes ago gifted 50 memberships <laughs> in a single click, which is unheard of. So congratulations, all the new members. We got Robert Rollister, uh, Kron Rican, Born to Code, Jerry Schick, Martin. Uh, you've all been blessed with the MicroStrategy membership of the channel. So please thank Lock Sky for hooking you guys up. That's pretty remarkable. Thank you, family, for always giving. We appreciate you. You're officially a legend. But anyways, family, now for our featured uh, story of the day. Uh, Whitney Webb says BlackRock's grand scheme to tokenize the world, and she exposes it. So I want to actually break this down and shout out to uh, Whitney Webb. She was recently interviewed on this podcast with uh, Mark Goodwin. And I'm going to read you some of the quotes, and then we're going to dive deeper into what this means as tokenization, BlackRock's plan to own the fractionalized world. So yeah, here are some quotes. Larry Fink on Bitcoin's future. Bitcoin is a technology for asset storage, and it is an asset, not a currency. And now they're calling it progress in their new ETF ad, interestingly. If we can tokenize an ETF of Bitcoin, what else? Can we ETF? That's the ultimate goal. They're coming for Ethereum, ETF. They want to turn everything into an ETF. That's their business model. Now, Mark's observation on tokenization from the pod with Whitney Webb, he, he said, you will allow BlackRock to build the pano piction of tokenized earth with Americans' retirement money under the dialect pretext of owning the liberals, unknowingly collecting all aspects of ownership to centralized databases, walled identity gardens, and fractionalized reserve assets transmitted and issued on the private blockchains of Wall Street banks. Now, here's Whitney's critique of Wall Street. Don't trust Wall Street giants Preach. They become that powerful on Wall Street because they are pretty cutthroat and criminal. Criminal. That's how you rise to the top of the particular sphere. And she makes a great point there. Of course, they're criminal. Now, Mark, on the co-opting of Bitcoin, he says, the ETF kind of directly plays against Bitcoin as a currency and really leans into it as a commodity. So we have to just be very careful at basically not allowing ourselves to be useful idiots and cheer on the coming of the tokenized world. Now, here's the conclusion from this particular pod, and I encourage you to watch it and check it out for yourself. I'll include this resource in the show notes below the video in the description. 
The pod presents a critical examination of intersection between Bitcoin and traditional financial institutions, specifically focused on the actions and plans of BlackRock, the largest asset manager in the world, and its CEO, Lawrence Fink. The discussion reveals a history of financial manipulation, which we all know they have a history of, and a potential co-opting of Bitcoin's original ethos of decentralization and financial sovereignty. The episode serves as a cautionary tale, urging the Bitcoin community to maintain vigilance against the backdrop of political and financial entities that may seek to harness the technology for purposes divergent from its founding principles. Though this reflective narrative, the episode calls for the re-evaluation of the direction in which Bitcoin's integration into the financial system is heading and encourages a steadfast commitment to the core values of privacy, freedom, resistance, and centralized control. Now, I also want to point out, quoting the high priest of Bitcoin, Max Kaiser, who has been blowing the whistle and not trusting the government and BlackRock and what they're doing as well. Max says, you are not protected against government seizures, and the U.S. government plans to seize all the Bitcoin ETF Bitcoin in the interest of national security. Now, BlackRock and Fidelity already collectively now hold over 200,000 Bitcoin through custodian Coinbase. At the rate they're going, they're going to soon have millions of Bitcoin in their possession. So could the ultimate plot be for the U.S. government in the name of national security, ultimately confiscate the Bitcoin and replace it with the U.S. dollar or CBDC equivalent? What are your thoughts? Quoting Max here. Number one, the government seizes the ETF in the name of national security. Number two, before they send you your USD, the price moves up 100000 Then you pay tax on the gain from the payout. And with what's left, you buy Bitcoin at a price 100,000 higher. Then the price crashes, and now you're sitting on a net losing position from where you started. So keep in mind, know thy enemy. Anything is possible. And just note this, that self-custodied Bitcoin is not equivalent to Bitcoin ETF Bitcoin, because if you don't own the private keys, therefore, it's not your coins. It would be Coinbase's or BlackRock's or whomever is holding the Bitcoin. Now, while the BlackRock chairman was not shy about expressing other aspects of the potential build of tokenized digital markets, these two statements in particular illuminate the coveted path forward for how the biggest institutions intend to be carefully integrated into Bitcoin into the legacy financial system. Larry Fink even went so far to turn the abbreviated noun ETF, an exchange-traded fund, into a verb gloating about transmuting the Bitcoin protocol into just another speculative commodity. All the efforts of miners and nodes across the world to decentralize trust and issuance and settlement reduced to a paper offering by their iShares division. That's right. Here's Mr. Lawrence Fink right here. The biggest players in the U.S. dollar system are all but clamoring over each other to offer such products to their retail customers. Understanding that the Axum neuters Bitcoin as a viable currency capable of competing with day-to-day -day bargaining and settlement utility of the dollar, there are many reasons to believe the U.S. dollar system has much to gain from dollar-denominated appreciation of Bitcoin, but significantly less so if the protocol itself is capable of serving the everyday transactional needs of billions across the globe. One of the most common rebuttals to the claim that Bitcoin cannot scale to become a functioning currency is the Lightning Network, the Layer 2. While the trustless method of shared upspent transaction outputs via hash time locked contracts payment channel is quite novel, the ultimate end game for such model servicing billions necessitates a large amount of liquidity, in Bitcoin terms, locked up within the network. A centralized Lightning Network brings about many issues of privacy, transactional censorship, and even user access restrictions, not to mention the mathematical realities of demand for Bitcoin limited block space when opening a billion channels. Now, many fintech companies such as the Lightning Labs and Blockstream have spent millions in capital developing methods for utilizing Bitcoin as a way to issue tokenized assets such as stable coins like Tether's USDT in order to transact dollar denominated tokens via Lightning channels or federated side chains. While the institutional adoption dream by early Bitcoin adopters has certainly come to fruition, the actualization and methods of these institutions is clear. Bitcoin must remain an asset and all effort on scaling is the currency should be directed towards 
the dollar. Now, Larry Fink himself in the same Bloomberg interview stated, we believe the ETFs are a technology no different than Bitcoin was a technology for asset storage. Bitcoin spot ETF products encourage many practices far outside the norm of the typical Bitcoin user within the near decade and a half of its existence. An example, trusting a custodian with your keys, limiting exchange to U.S. business days and hours, and aggregating individual exposure into a collective paper claim managed or surveilled by highly regulated brokers. The anti-state revolution that has dominated the most Bitcoin discourse since 2009 has become colored by red, white, and blue ticker tape, furthering the idea that the U.S. has much to gain from the adoption and co-option of Bitcoin is the tangible stash of coins distributed within its borders. MicroStrategy's 190,000 Bitcoin stash, the 215,000 Bitcoin seized from the Department of Justice, Block 1's 164,000, Grayscale's 487,000, and GBT and now with the new U.S. spot ETF offerings holding a combined now above 200,000 BTC as mass accumulation continues. This is an arguably meaningful portion of the circulating supply of Bitcoin, not to mention the likely possibility of further treasuries held off the books by American investors. Bitcoin is already making the U.S. ETF inflow history as the combined growth within the first two weeks already outpaced the decade-long entirety of the silver spot ETF market. Any liquidity needed for an institutional lightning network that could compete with legacy payment providers such as Visa and MasterCard is already safely nestled within the borders of the U.S. and thus well within reach of the regulatory arms of the DOJ, SEC, Treasury, as well as the Federal Reserve. So there you have it, my crypto fam. Do you think the master plot is for BlackRock to virtually tokenize everything, as Whitney Webb points out, and that they can also confiscate all the Bitcoin they choose through Coinbase, which already now has over a million Bitcoin custodied between BlackRock, the other asset managers such as GBTC, etc. Let me know your thoughts, because that would give the government more Bitcoin than Satoshi himself. Let that sink in, family.